Just like with table views, collection views also use cells to display data. Unlike table views, however, collection views do not come with default cells ready to go. As simple as our app is, you still need to define a custom cell. Navigate to main.storyboard and select the collection view. Let me zoom out a bit here. On the top left corner, you should see a square outline. This is a prototype cell that you can modify to suit your needs. Later on, we'll look at some really cool custom cells, but for now we're going to keep it very simple. If you have created a custom table view cell before, this should mostly be a refresher. Our goal is to design a cell that looks like this. It is more or less a replica of a default table view cell. Select the cell. You can do that either in the editor or in the document outline and navigate to the size inspector over on the right hand side. The collection view cell currently has a size of automatic. From the drop down, select custom. Change the width to 414, 414 points. If you have the default iOS 11 storyboard scene, this is essentially the full width. Next, change the height to 44 points. Changing the height and width in the storyboard scene doesn't necessarily mean that this is the size our actual cells will be. Eventually, the layout object you've defined will override the measurements you specify here but it helps to understand how your cell is going to be laid out. Okay, so that's all for the size of the cell. Let's add a single label in here to display text from the data source. Drag out a label from the object library and place it in the prototype cell. With the label selected, click on the Add New Constraints button in the Auto Layout submenu and give it a leading and trailing space to super view constraint with a constant of eight points. Again, make sure that constraint to margins is unchecked. Next, click on the align button, which is immediately to the right of the add new constraints button and select the vertically in container constraint. Click on add constraints to add it to the label. Finally, you need to give this cell a reuse identifier. With the cell selected in the document outline, navigate to the attributes inspector and give it a reuse identifier of number cell. It's an odd name, but all we're doing is displaying a single number in this cell. That's all we need to do to visually set up the view. Just like table views though, we also need to create a custom subclass so that we can reference this cell in code. Bring out the project navigator, add a new Swift file to the project, or you could hit cancel here and select Coco Touch class. This custom cell is going to be a subclass of UI collection view cell. So under the subclass here, you'll see it's specified and we'll give this cell a name number cell. If something else is specified for you, you can simply type it out collection view cell and then set the title hit next and then create to add it to the group. I don't like referencing cell reuse identifiers using strings, so a trick I like is to create a static property on the class that uses the type name as a reuse identifier. This line of code should automatically create a string that matches the type name, which is the same as our reuse identifier. We also need to add an outlet to the label we created in the prototype so that we can reference it in code. Tap on the add editor on right button and switch to main.storyboard. With the cell selected, so number cell here in the document outline, navigate to the identity inspector and change the custom class of the prototype cell to number cell. Finally, control drag from the label, or you can do it from the document outline as well, and create an outlet. Name the outlet label and hit connect. 
If you're having difficulty control dragging from the label, again, you can do it from the document outline, or you can right click on the label here and select the referencing outlet. And that's all there is to it. In the next video, let's talk about wiring up the layout object and the cell to some data.